Hey everyone, thanks for joining me back in Belfast. Today we're on the Blackstone Griddle making some cheese steaks. We want to find out what cut of beef is going to give us our best flavor. So let's find out and get to it. We will be making three different cheese steaks, each one with a different cut of meat. Everything else will be the same, including the fantastic bread we got from Bell Mercantile, which is a collective market down in Belfont. They get shipments of fresh-made bread from Lycoming Bakery a couple times a week. For our three meats, we went the thinly sliced ribeye from our local grocery store, Wise Markets. If your local grocery store doesn't carry this, check with your local Asian market. They normally have thinly sliced meats used for hot pot dishes. For cheese steaks, you want to use ribeye if you can. Our other steaks come from our local butcher, Nittany Meats located at the split out in Zion. A fresh ribeye steak, and a frozen package of thinly sliced beef steak. Seems like a shame, but we're gonna take this prime cut of steak and try and slice this thin, as thin as possible. But trying to get these thin slices won't work on a fresh steak. We need to freeze it but only for a little while. Grab some parchment paper, wrap the steak, and place it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. While that's hardening up, we'll move over to our onions. Some folks like them sliced as well, but for me, chopped onions are the way to go. All right, after our time in the freezer, we can finally slice our steak. You can see, it does cut much nicer now. The key, is to get the steak thin, as thin as you can, as thin as possible. I know what you're thinking. Yep, mandolin. But it just doesn't work here. Not to mention, you feel like you're one slice away from being a woodshop teacher at the high school. Using a sharp, good quality knife and your best cutting skills, cut the steak against the grain, as thin as you can but it's difficult to get as thin as a commercial slicer can. Our secret to cheesesteaks is the oil or fat that we use during cooking. Beef tallow, or rendered beef fat. It's easy to make at home, and I'll have a video for it coming out soon. And down go the onions. Move these around a bit and start them to caramelize. We'll cover them and let the steam soften them up for the rest of the way. So the same treatment here for our steaks. Beef tallow on a medium high temp griddle. Then we place the meat. A fresh sliced ribeye. the chipped beef steak, and our frozen sliced ribeye from the grocery store. These don't take long to cook. We're looking just to remove the red in the steak. There are two main styles for cheesesteak. There's a style of pulling and shredding the beef, and there's a style of more keeping the slices whole. As you can see from our fresh ribeye, its thicker slices lends itself to keeping whole. Compare that to how our beef chip steak from the butchers is cooking up. The chip steak consists of several layers of our thinnest cuts yet. Nitty Meats doesn't actually make these packs, so I'm not positive where they come from. But you can tell how easy the meat tears and pulls apart. You can definitely tell there's a lot of moisture here. which will continue to steam with the meat. Our grocery store thin sliced or capaccio ribeye. It cooks up great from frozen, pulls and shreds easily. At our grocery store, they sell both a sliced beef steak and a sliced ribeye. The ribeye is the one you want for the best flavor, only for a couple more dollars. Back over to our fresh steak. 
We separate the steaks into two sandwiches. Add in our now softened and caramelized chopped onions. These smell amazing. Add two slices of provolone cheese. And let them start to melt. Split our fresh rolls and cover the steaks. Once the cheese is melted, they are ready to come off. Cooking cheese steaks are pretty easy to do. Having the right ingredients, rendered beef fat, quality meat, provolone from the deli counter, fresh onions, and a great local bread all come together in making a great tasty meal that everyone enjoys. Finally, our carpaccio ribeye. Onions, provolone, and fresh bread. As the last steaks come off the griddle, it's time to find out which one has the best flavor. Let me know in the comments what cut of steak you like for your cheese steaks. First up is our sliced ribeye. That's an expensive cut, and I'm looking forward to it. Let's try it out. got a really strong steak flavor to it, like you're eating a ribeye. But it tastes more like a steak sandwich than it does a cheese steak. Next up is our butcher's chip steak. Let's find out how it tastes. Mm. It's definitely got the flavor. And it's got the texture that we're looking for. And it does taste like a cheese steak. I just don't know if it's the best one yet. Last up, it's a sliced ribeye from the grocery store. Let's see how it goes. Mm. That. That has the cheesesteak flavor. And our winner, the grocery store thinly sliced ribeye.